Hello my lovelies and welcome back to more Let's Play Legend of Lagaya. My name is Rabbit and in our previous episode we spent roughly three-fourths of that video at the Hunter Spring reading through the secrets of four different mysterious statues and we did that for two reasons. Obviously it's not that important for you to do that, I mean it doesn't really impact the story, but one, I wanted to kind of summarize some of the information that I've already presented to you guys throughout this Let's Play so far. Just because there are some things that maybe I don't do a great job of explaining or I may have actually forgotten to mention a couple things. So that is number two. I thought it would be a great way of bringing up topics and bringing up some mechanics that I did overlook or just things that I think will be important for us to know that will kind of become more of an issue later on. So we spent a while doing that and then we began the true trek to Drake Castle. We just made it, headed up the stairs and entered this left hand room for two reasons. One is I wanted to spawn a conversation. Ah. I needed to be on this side with one of the people that is behind this wall here. He says, Gurg, there's a sense of sadness in the eyes of the Seru. Vaughn, take a good look. This is a human possessed by a Seru. I've looked into this person's mind the same way I spoke to your mind. But the Seru controlling this person's spirit is too strong and I couldn't make out any words. The only way to return these people to normal is to drive away the mist. So I kind of thought that was a cool little informative conversation there. Oh my god, I did not mean to make that happen a second time. Stop, game. Quit playing. <laughs> the second reason we came in here was to find this case over here. And it says it contains the sunrise key. So do we wish to open the case? Yes, we do. So the sunrise key is in the case. And we now have it in our possession. That will be very useful for this middle door here. So Vaughn inserted the sunrise key into the keyhole and the sunrise gate opened, yay! So now we're just going to head straight up here and hook a lefty left to grab a treasure chest, which just contains another healing leaf, not really anything too spectacular, anything to really write home about. But okay, let's kick this off with the fight and this is kind of something I mentioned in our previous episode that if you did neglect to grab a Gimard in Rim Elm, you will find them here. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to start off by spiriting because I really want to get rid of this skeleton. They deal way too much damage. The Gimards are kind of pussies. I mean, as I've already mentioned, they are from Rim Elm, so they're not too spooky. Okay, I want to go ahead and combo my arts here and again this isn't something you really have to do but let's go ahead and do somersault by doing up down or I should say high low up and then we'll immediately transition into slash kick by going down and then to the left so that should allow us as long as you have enough AP to kind of string together your abilities wow really or combo your arts. I mean, it's not really anything too special. I think we've already seen just from me autoing that Vaughn has been executing more than one ability when he has enough room to do so. And obviously our bar is going to increase as we continue on in the game. So this won't be that big of a deal in relying on spirit. I mean, Spirit is great for reasons that have already been explained by the game, in that it increases your defense, or I should say your blocking rate, but you won't absolutely have to use it, especially for petty fights like dungeon crawling later on. But for now, it's nice since the skeletons are still giving us a little bit of a run for our money. So that wasn't too bad since we took out the skeleton, so I'm happy about that. Okay. Now let's finally head south here. And there are some people in here, which is no bueno. But let's run over here and do some investigating. Oh my gosh, a Drake ghost, which, hmm, he might be a little bit tough, but he shouldn't be too bad. So the reason why I came down to the very bottom of this screen here, there is like a little secret hidden item off camera. Uh, you know what? Let me just go ahead and go with my same combo here. Uh, off camera. I can never remember if it's to the right or the left. And I guess going 
through the lower ones. It's probably not why, since obviously this dude has no legs. <laughs> so that was not the best choice. But it should be fine. Uh, let's go. Oh my god, that's not what I meant to do. Let's focus on... Hmm. It looks like we have a downward ability. Well, hyper elbow should be... Oh my god, really? Hyper elbow should be fine for this. So let's go ahead and try that. Really? Okay, dude. I'm going to need you to stop being an asshole. So anyway, I guess, well, I'm just, I'll just auto the last bit. Please, Vaughn, don't disappoint me. Oh, yes, he did hyper elbow on his own. Fabuloso. Okay, so as I was saying, there is a little hidden item off camera, and I can never remember if it's to the right or the left. I checked the right. It wasn't over there, so it should be over here to the left-hand side. It's one of these. Okay, so just spam your X button, and it is over here on the left, as you can see, since we found it, and it is a Fury Boost. Let's take a quick minute to see what it does, and also to heal, because we are getting our asses handed to us a little bit after I range here. Okay, Fury Boost. It extends action gauge for one battle. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's not that amazing but it's still important to look at here and to pick up since it is a hidden item all right so let's exit this menu and head up here to this case which says it contains lightning key do you wish to open the case why yes we will so the lightning key is in the case so we now have this fabulous lightning key and we're pretty much done here for now so let's head out of here and come up here to the north hand side and put the lightning key in the hole to open the lightning gates. And again, we're just going to make the same journey northward. Alrighty, so let's keep on going. That was two Gimards, which were not playing around with me. But let's head down in here and grab what, oh my god, Vaughn, come on, focus. To grab the infamous survival knife, which I told you guys we would be finding in the upcoming dungeon. And why I told you to go ahead and pass on dropping your cash on that. Not that it was too expensive of a purchase, but, you know, I just, I think it's better to go ahead and wait to get it. But that's obviously a choice that you can make for yourself. And just so that you can see the difference here, that is going to increase our attack power by six points, which is nothing to laugh at. It's going to make a difference for sure. All right, so let's head down. Having that battle reminded me of two things that I wanted to mention to you. Uh, but first, Vaughn found a magic leaf here in this lower right-hand corner. So one is that I think I do want to go ahead and leave in the next fight because since we equipped the survival knife, it reminded me in that previous fight that I wanted to show you that you can actually see the changes that you make to your character in terms of equipment and... I don't know, like armor, weapons, etc., etc. Second thing I wanted to mention is that we made it to level 5 from that last fight. So that's pretty fabulous. So let's go ahead and get the hell out of here and run all the way over here to the right-hand side. And I will go ahead and leave this in. Oh, God, it's these Gimards. It, I, I mean, they're so easy, so it doesn't matter. Come on, Vaughn. We can do it, especially now that we have our little survival knife, which you can see is in my left hand. And I can show you in the command menu, you can actually see that it says arms instead of left, similarly to how Rosaru replaced right. But I'm just going to auto my way through to get rid of Gamard A. Okay, one down. You douchebag, seriously. But okay, I promise, seriously, no more repeat fights. <laughs> but isn't that fantastic, you guys, how you can actually see the changes? There aren't a lot of RPGs that did the same thing in the late 90s, where when you put on a certain new piece of armor, the color of your character's outfit changes or the weapon changes when you switch it out. Like, I just, I just always thought that was so cool. But anyway, the point of coming over here to this right-hand door is to examine this case, which contains a star key. Do we wish to open the case? Why, yes, we do. And the star key is in the case, which Vaughn now has. And there's nothing really else too special about this room. So again, I mean, I guess if you want to, you can come over here and read what's in this bookcase. 
Oh man, that Drake ghost rocked my world, you guys. Okay. I'm so glad we have about a kajillion healing leaves over here. They are making the difference, that's for sure. But anyway, so like I was saying, you can come over here and read what's in this bookcase if you really care. You don't have to, but for the sake of trying to showcase other things outside of just battles and finding the keys that you have to have, let's just read what's in here. So on the bookshelf is a book titled The Geography of Drake Kingdom. Do you wish to read it? Yes. Let's go ahead and look through this. So Drake Kingdom lies in a remote part of South Lagaya on a peninsula of mountains and valleys. Under the rule of King Drake, there is safety and abundant resources. Visitors to Drake Castle should visit Mount Rikuroa. Go through Drake Castle and head north to find Mount Rikuroa. Mount Rikuroa, that's almost a tongue twister, isn't it? At its summit stands the Genesis tree, which is said to watch over humans since the age of the gods. Oh, very interesting. I wonder if we'll have to do something with that Genesis tree. Maybe, we'll have to see. Anyway, Vaughn closes the book. And we are going to head over here to this door and use the new star key that we just picked up by inserting it into the keyhole. So the stargate is open. Let's roll. Roll out, Vaughn. And let's head over here to grab this chest. And we got another healing leaf, which is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And let's go down here and do a little bit of investigating. All right, so I could not be bothered with these stupid monsters anymore, so I went ahead and summoned Gimard, and yay, he is now at level three, and although it's not displaying it here, let me check something really fast. Oh, it's not going to show me. Anyway, so now that Gamard has hit level three, his burning attack applies an additional status effect, if you will, or it does impact the enemy in an additional way outside of just doing damage. It will now lower their attack by, I believe it said 5%. I cannot entirely remember. I think it's 5%. We'll be sure to see together in our next episode when I'm no longer cutting out the repeat fights. I will make sure I summon him so you can see that change to him. So this is another reason why you should go ahead and try to level up the Seru that you absorb as you progress through the game because not only will their abilities themselves become more powerful but you will see sort of like a secondary effect become a part of their package so it's really really cool and it absolutely incentivizes you using more of your seru so even if you don't really love their design they could be useful in other ways outside of just dealing damage so with that being said let's go ahead and continue oh my goodness Vaughn, you are out of control and we are here in the throne room yay and thank goodness we made it to a room where we can oh, save. But anyway, Maeda says, Vaughn, the door to this room is quite strong. If you shut the door tightly, you should be able to rest peacefully here. Do you want to rest? Hell to the yes, I want to rest. A wise decision. While you are sleeping, I will stand guard. So this is amazing if you do want to go ahead and level one or two times, but I'll talk about that after we're done with Maeda talking. Vaughn, I apologize for interrupting your dream. There is something I must tell you about the Seru and my powers. That's right, the Seru. They are horrible creatures, but the Seru themselves are not at fault. The Mist is responsible for all of this. I have special powers to use against the Seru. I can assimilate with the Seru that the Mist has made mad. The special powers of the Seru will combine with my own, making me a powerful weapon. I have already absorbed the abilities of Gimard, the Fire Seru you have fought. It is not always possible to absorb the abilities of a Seru by fighting it. Nevertheless, let's try to fight as many Seru as we can and hope we absorb its powers. You can use the Seru abilities by expending magic points. When to use it is up to you. Just remember that MP is limited. Well, we already know all this because we read those secrets. But anyway, Vaughn took a nap. HP and MP are completely recovered, which is amazing. Vaughn, you look so much better now. Well, fuck you, Maida. It's not like you look so hot yourself. Anyway, let's run over here and grab a fire book one in the treasure chest. And let's use this bad boy. Well, first, let's read the description. Book of Hyper Arts for Maida. So we will use this on Vaughn. And we learned Tornado Flame, which is another art move that we now can use. Oh, let me not go to magic. What am I clicking on? Just to show you guys, 
This is a little three directional attack. It is a hyper art of fire, a whirling blur of flames, and it costs 30 AP. So I will be sure in our next episode together to show you Tornado Flame as well as show you Gimard. But what I'm actually going to go ahead and do is I'm going to save, well, whatever. Let's, okay, Vaughn, do you wanna open this bookcase? <laughs> so this one has research notes in it. Let's go ahead and read it. The reports were correct, as I feared. Any human wearing a seru ceases to be a human in the mist. But because of some power, a person possessed by a crazed seru also ceases to age. That means a person wearing a seru could live for a hundred, a thousand years, nay, forever. But is immortality worth giving up being a human? That I do not know. I must report this to King Drake at once. Okay. So let's put that book on the case and go ahead and end things here. So I will save, but only after I spend a little bit of time leveling. I'm probably going to get Vaughn to, well, I'll definitely get him to six. I might get him to level seven, just depending on how I feel. But either way, when we come back together, there will be a change to Vaughn. Gibmard might be level four. I'll have to just see how much I want to actually use him. But you should take the opportunity right now to level up since you can repeatedly come in here and rest and have Maida stand guard and basically restore your HP and MP for free. So that is what I'm going to do. Thank you so much for watching. When we come back after all of that stuff has happened and changed, we will then continue exploring Drake Castle and advance the story. So I will see you guys in just a moment in our next episode. Thank you for watching my Let's Play Legend of Lagaya. I am Rabbit and I can't wait to knock out Drake Castle. See you soon guys.